Kathleen Watterson Court Case Short Summary Civil Suit Filed in Civil Court Yeah, I actually have uh, two questions regarding the lawsuit. Sure. Um, like, what type of court did you file the lawsuit in, and what type of lawsuit was it? Was it a civil suit, or was it a criminal suit, and was it a federal, state, or local court that it's you filed a, in? It's a civil suit, and it was filed in a civil court in a Joshua Tree, but civil court is the same thing as superior court, so uh, it, it basically it's still a state court, but it's just a, it was a civil case heard in superior court in California. Uh, in, Santa, in the county of San Bernardino. Okay, thank you. Explanation in court. And, but everything I said was exactly the truth, and it was backed up by the facts of, of the meters I was using and also the, the, the uh, readings I had, as well as the videotape uh, of the readings, and explained, being able to explain to the court the difference between a square wave, which is a microwave, a hockey. Call right now. I don't have time to talk to you. Uh, Karen, we can hear you. I'm sorry. Uh, any, okay. Anyway, uh, so I was able to explain in layman's terms what a regular sine wave, which is a regular radio wave that looks like a, like a normal wave, what a sine wave was versus a square wave. Which is a which is a telltale sign of a microwave, and also the, uh, a sawtooth wave, which is the telltale sign of a microwave. But you can put uh, auditory signals as well as visual signals behind a microwave. And I also explained that it, that's why they use microwaves and cell phones because they can pass through buildings like there's nothing there, as well as uh, as um, uh, you can pass through brick mortar, and that's why if you get in an elevator, since you're surrounded by metal, essentially you're surrounded by a Faraday cage, and that's why your cell phone doesn't work inside of a, a elevator and stuff. So I put it in layman's terms so they can understand, and also the difference between the types of waves out there, and that microwaves actually, uh, if you're exposed to large amounts of microwaves, they can actually be directly correlated, different signals can be directly correlated to different uh, uh, different uh, sicknesses and actually cause disease as well. And and I actually got uh, part of the website I was working on up, and uh, you can pull it up. Uh, it's uh, that report I gave you on microwave radiation thickness and, uh, and talking about how, you know, you can anywhere from sleep deprivation to depression to anger to actual uh, skin problems where the, you can get burns on your skin, to headaches, to uh, nausea, to uh, tinnitus, which is ringing your ears. Uh, they can affect your eyes. They can cause glaucoma. Okay, so these are, these are, what you're saying is that these are some of the symptoms that Kathleen was also experiencing? Uh, some of the symptoms, yeah, but the meaning that, that these are, that they're depending on how much exposure you are to uh, microwaves and also what frequencies they're being generated at. And I have pictures of, like, my face burns and, you know, some of the nausea, so most of those, yes. But, but the thing was, he was trying to attack me on the fact that, are you a medical doctor? And I said, to him, I said to him probably five times, and I, and I kept on repeating myself. I, I said, I already told you, I'm not a medical doctor. I can't diagnose her. You know, I can only take her word for it. Just like if you told me you, you had food poisoning from whatever you, you ate or something, or you're having a heart attack right now, because my knees real fat and just take care. Of Oh, very much, but yeah. I, I said that, you know, if you had a heart attack right now, I would believe the fact that you're having a heart attack, or if you claimed you had food sickness, I would take your word for it, but I can't diagnose it. I, I go, I'm not a medical doctor. I, I think we've established that. But that being the case, I have worked in the field of computer science for 20 years, and also in network, as a networking engineer, as well as a programmer, a college professor, and... Um, and in that, in that being the case, uh, you don't realize that in network engineering, we you know we do a lot. We have a lot of test meters, but we also do not for everything from telephones to uh, wireless networking and stuff like that. So we work with microwaves and detecting microwaves. So we're not 
jumping onto somebody else's network or somebody else's network isn't interfering with our network. Because, uh, mind you, uh, uh, wireless networks are all in the microwave spectrum at 2.4 gigahertz. So, anyway, to make a long story short, I just I tore the attorney apart as opposed to letting him try to tear me apart. And I made a fool of him. And, and at the end of it all, after I got dismissed, he, uh, the attorney was almost adamant, like he did not want me to reappear in court to, for, to, for any reason. But he, he, he said that uh, he, he would like to reserve the right to ar- re-argue uh, some minute point. Um, so they pushed it out until the 4th of, uh, of uh, September. But that still gave the conditional restraining order with all the the, the same uh, the same things on it, meaning uh, no EMF frequencies, no electronic harassment, all that stuff on the restraining order. And the the perp uh, not only was visibly shaken by it, but the, literally shaken. I mean, I mean, he had to be comforted and stuff by about five people outside of the outside the courthouse and inside the courthouse. Audio and visual via microwave. Explained. Fabulous. And I knew we were going to win as soon as we realized, I realized that instead, the satellite was not... Well, well yeah, it, it wasn't, it was yeah. like, you know, playing, if you, I always would quake court to, to a game of poker, you yeah. know, um, you, you don't want to play your, your ace in the hole, uh, you know, your first card, but the point being is when you have multiple aces in the hole, then it, it it goes to the irrefutable fact that you have you have factual evidence, and not only do you have one piece of factual evidence, but you have five or ten or fifteen to back up what you're saying. So, you know, the more you have, and the more the that everything fits into place, you know, that the more that that the court's obviously going to believe what you're saying, and you know, not try to refute what you're saying, and and understand what you're saying as well. You know. And not only that, we didn't even show them the videos of the interference. Well, the, no, the, the funny thing you was know? was was we had it all. Well, we had the the interference videos of the TV, and and I I actually explained it all on the stand, and that that microwaves were able to do it, and I said. You know, we audio and, and, the audio. And, and and I said that also, you know, it, with the when I ex- was explaining what sawtooth blades were, were microwaves, but they looked like saw saw like a, what a saw blade would look like, and you can actually attach audio signal to the to the back end of it, and you can also attach a video signal to the back end of it, so you can actually put subliminals in people's heads. And they think they're 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 having voices being talked to them, even though it's not schizophrenia. As well as they can put, uh, uh, they can actually implant uh, like uh, images into people's heads with the same technology with sawtooth waves. And the reason being is because the waves aren't completely square waves. So on the back end, they can attach audio and they can attach video. And that being the case, yeah, yeah, you can actually have an auditory <laughs> hearing effect from it. They can hear you. And and I go and I go on top of that, and I explained how how because the judge actually asked me how how would they be able to hear you in your own house? And I, I said, well, that's actually pretty easy, really. I said, um, if you're bouncing microwaves from a pulse generator off of anywhere, and then with a with another. Uh, another uh, sort of a, a microwave signal, but you're running it uh, out of phase, meaning, say, you're, you're, uh, you're running one, one pulse generator uh, square waves. When the top square wave is hitting the house, you're, you're sending it out. Then you're, sending, you're doing it 180 degrees out of phase, meaning the bottom part of the square wave is coming out when the top part is coming out of the other one. So that creates an interference pattern. And if you have something that it bounces, because it'll bounce back just like radar or sonar, and with that interference pattern, that's when you can pick up the actual uh, audio sounds that if somebody's talking or something like that, you can actually pick up what they're saying by doing that. And it's through the interference patterns that people are able to pick up what people are hearing, or not hearing, but saying, and, and, uh, and it, they can tell you exactly what you're saying because they're using something to pick up the interference patterns in the microwaves. And and once you pick up the interference patterns, all you have to do is 
is run it run, run it through your computer and you can hear the audio effects of the interference pattern. The verdict. What the verdict? What he? What the? Uh, what the? How the, the judge read the verdict? The the verdict was that he concluded that there was microwave harassment going on and and, um, and noise harassment, electronic harassment, and that. Oh really? The judge said that. Yeah, he 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 was he was he definitely uh, he definitely was convinced of that, and that that. In the in the in the restraining order that it says there's not to be any sort of electronic or EMS uh, electromagnetic. Yeah, I, but I brought up that restraining order. And, I put everything in there. I didn't and, have to and, go for it. And you know, besides the fact that you know you can't come in with within a hundred yards, it doesn't matter. You know, because he's not doing it that way. But it, 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 he made sure to put that there can't be any electronic forms of harassment or any EMF or anything like that. Um, that can be linked back to him as well, far so as the, the, um, well, this is an unusual restraining order because uh, this is the first time I've heard of a restraining order where the defendant was directed to not, even though he was not within, say, so many yards or feet of the house, he was uh, directed not to, um, uh, how, how did he put it, uh, harass the defendant from uh, the, the defendant from but via any electronic means is how they put it. Right. Okay. Because um, do they look at this as sort of like a um, some type of an attack weapon? This microwave harassment. I think he actually he, the judge understood it as a directed energy weapon, and that that the way it was directed, it could be totally a microwave directed energy. Well, you know, the great thing about what you guys were able to do is that with uh, finally uh, acquiring the signal evidence, um, what you're able to do is, is file a, um, uh, something in court, say a restraining order, and uh, without an attorney, and still uh, have the possibility of bringing criminal charges against your perpetrator. So, and then you have the evidence to prove it. So this is something that is probably a lot easier for most people than filing an entire lawsuit, say, against the government. You can, oh, exactly. you can actually, you know, sing, pinpoint the actual individual that's doing it and prosecute that, that person. What they did to prove where the microwaves is coming from. What we did is we went around the whole neighborhood. Well, yeah, I, I went around in a five-mile... Well, we did, uh, uh, but... Uh, yeah, you have to understand where Kathleen lives. You you don't even get cell phone reception out here. So, um, so I knew I wasn't looking for a cell phone uh, tower, you know, because I I was looking for the main cause of the microwave, which would have been, you know, the main one would have been a cell phone tower, and then the second one would have been a, 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 a wireless network or a wireless network that was nearby. But I I could there was no way I checked the computers. There's no wireless networks in, within any range of it or anywhere around here, nor does Kathleen have a, a wireless network. And then, um, and then when I started doing measurements, I, uh, when I took started taking measurements, I started with the trifold meter, and I started. I noticed that the the north uh, the northeast corner of the house had the the highest. Uh, I mean, it was pegged off the trifold meter in the microwave spectrum. And then I would move my, as I moved my way towards the southeast corner of the house, it was still, I mean, almost pegged. It wasn't quite as high, but it was still pegged pretty close by the, to, to off the top. But then I, as I moved around the side of the house to the, what would be the, the southwest corner of the house, there it actually cut down to almost half. And then when I moved up to the, what would be the northwest corner of the house, it was the same readings as what I was getting in the southeast corner of the house. So that's when I realized it was coming in at a, at a diagonal direction. And, oh, uh, and, and then to, to cut out uh, any sort of, uh, of, uh, of uh, you know, anything coming from anywhere else, I actually Faraday caged the, the smart meter in the front of her house to the point where at 
first when you put the trifill meter, I mean, it pegged it off the chart, but after I was done, you couldn't even get a reading from the trifill meter. I mean, like standing on the, the, the smart meter after I ferreted it, caged it, and grounded it, you couldn't even get a reading from it. And then I started at, with a RF spectrometer as well as a, as a frequency analyzer. And um, and then I used another piece of equipment. But each piece of equipment was, you know, highly accurate and more accurate. And the RF spectrometer was great because it, it showed the telltale signs of microwaves, the square waves coming in, as well as the sawtooth waves. And we were able to capture that on video as well as pictures. And then I was also able to capture the actual frequencies coming in um, with an, another meter I had, so the actual uh, frequencies he was using. He was using a sweeper, like a, and the way they do it is that they, it's a it's a microwave pulse generator slash sweep. Um, so what they, they can, and that's why I think he had two uh, dishes pointed at her house because he was running one in in pulse uh, microwave mode. And the other, he was running in sweeped microwave mode, which would have been the sawtooth microwaves. The other one, in pulsed mode, would have been the square ones. But um, that being the case, when you run it in sweep mode, I mean, you, you basically program it to say start at you know six hertz and move your way all the way through the whole spectrum. And then once you're at the end of the spectrum, go start over again. You know, and it's just a continuous you know uh, thing that goes over and over and over again. And um, and then the the pulse in the impulse mode, it's just sending out pulsed microwaves. And I noticed that they were coming in in a period of about eight seconds. And so about every eight seconds, I you know I would I would you know catch with the telltale signs of pulsed microwaves coming in. You know so so you know it was pretty easy. And then when I was driving around in the five mile radius with Kathleen with my meters. Um, I pointed out to her that every single satellite dish, whether it's a, a direct TV dish or dish network dish, the, the newer types of dishes, and there's uh, we came across about four of the older types of dishes that are the ten foot dishes. But if they're they're actually satellite dishes that are po that are used for telecommunications to get satellite signal. They're always going to point to the southern part of the sky because every uh, telecommunications satellite that's in the sky is over the equator, um, and it's in geosynchronous orbit over the equator. That's why every satellite out there that's actually used for television or whatever, or even satellite radio, is over the equator. And so every satellite dish out there should be pointing to the southern part of the sky. And, um, and the funny thing is, is the the Pert's two dishes, and this is a, this was a dead giveaway for me. But his two dishes were a direct line of sight, and they were kitty corner pointing directly at Kat, the front of Kathleen's house, and that's what gave me the di diagonal direction of the microwaves. But it was also the fact that his dishes were pointed in a northeaster eastern way as opposed to the southern part of the sky and you know within a five mile radius of the house his were the only two dishes that didn't point south and when he pointed that out i knew we had him yeah and also, i knew that was the key also i pointed <laughs> I, I pointed out on uh that that not only that i that, that uh, there was a picture that kathleen had of his house where it shows this ham radio equipment, which is fine. I mean, it, that's not going to affect people. But it had a, another piece of equipment on top of his house that he later took off his house, but he could have it behind his house or in his house. But it, 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 was, it was definitely a microwave pulse generator. And, and that being the case, and I explained that, that with, a, with a satellite dish, all you have to do to turn it into a, a transmitter is run power through it, you know, the reverse way, as opposed to just receiving, you know, energy from the satellite. You run power to it, and you can actually direct uh, microwaves to wherever you want it to go, you know. And so when I pointed that out, they they realized that that you know we we pinpointed the source of of where the microwaves are coming from. And second of all, you know, if, if he was using the satellites. In, a, in an actual real 
uh, you know, telecommunications fashion, they would have been pointing to the southern part of the sky, and also you wouldn't have a microwave generator that was actually caught on film that, when that you know, it, it had nothing to do with ham radio equipment. You could tell it was a, if you know what a microwave generator looks like, you knew that that was a pulse generator. So. Oh, wow. So you had caught, you really caught him red-handed with the pulse <laughs> generator and the angle of the microwave dishes and and all of that, and, and com- compared to uh, the angle of all the other, uh, the neighborhoods, the neighborhood uh, dishes. I so, okay, that was... Was a great the dishes as well that that showed that the that showed right. I mean, I was on the road, but I was standing right in front of his dishes with my meters that showed that the same the same microwaves and the same uh, frequencies were coming directly from the dishes. You know, and you know, obviously, I didn't go into his property, but I was standing right in front of his microwave dishes, getting the same exact uh, frequencies, and so. You know, oh, I see. So, uh, so you would pick up the frequencies in the captain's house and, and compare them to the uh, frequencies that were emanating from the perpetrator's house. Yeah, no, no I, was, yeah, I, I went directly in front of his, his dishes with my, with my meters and, and took readings, and they were the same exact readings as what I was getting at, at Kathleen's house. So. And even now when I, when I go over, I have a track around my house that I run around like nine times a day. And when diagonally at the diagonal end of the, my house, I always can feel myself running into them. So, yeah. Wow. Excellent. Okay, excellent. Well, see, it, it, uh, it's a matter of, it seems like, you know, what you did was very logical and very, very easy. Hopefully that we can duplicate those same efforts in other places. Um, people's circumstances are a little bit different, but I think it's it's probably doable. Um, okay, great, uh, Levi. You did a tremendous job, uh, excellent, and it was you know, everything you described was was perfectly logical, and even to the point where uh, a judge can understand um, logically how you reached the conclusions that you did, and he reached apparently obviously reached the same conclusion. So. That was tremendous. Detection equipment. Yes, this is Jeremy from Missouri. I had a question for Levi. Sure. Um, I, I had a question about uh, your detection equipment. Did you? Um, what type of equipment were you um, using to detect the square yeah. wave and the sawtooth wave? Um, I, I started out. I started out with a tri-field meter uh, when I was doing my initial detection, then I moved to an RF spectrum analyzer. And so the RF spectrum analyzer, actually, you can actually uh, take a whole readings and then plug it into your computer, and also it has a, uh, you can take the, the readings from that. But the way we were doing it, we were just taking a video of it. But the, the spectrum analyzer, Showed it would show the telltale signs of the square microwaves as well as the a sawtooth microwaves, and then it also showed the telltale signs of when radio waves were coming through too. So I mean they, that was that was one of the more sensitive pieces. And then I used another meter called the Gulib, and, and that actually you can run what it. Was in the, what was that called? G O O L I B, and. Uh, and what it, what you can do is you can set it to different frequency ranges, and it actually starts just going through the different frequencies, and it picks up every frequency it starts encountering. And you can actually press the button, and hold, uh, when you get a, a like a frequency, like for instance, six point six point two eight hertz was coming up a lot, and that's actually a direct correlation of 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 one of the frequencies that causes depression. And then I was also hitting a, a 10.83, which is one that causes anger as well as outburst, stuff like that. And so I was catching a lot of that. But then I was also catching uh, between uh, 11 and 13 a lot, which is when they're doing that, they're trying to do sleep deprivation. That those are the, the – and, and mind you, when they're doing it, they, it, it like, like I said, every person resonates at different frequencies. So – when they're doing it, they generally are doing it in uh, in frequency ranges, 
So, because uh, each person resonates at a different frequency, so they have to hit the right frequency for you. But the point being is these frequencies are well known to, to with the effects of what they do. So that that was I was using that, and then I I used the ELF uh, slash EMF reader, which is basically reading uh, milligauss and teslas, and um, and that that you know I didn't I I I have to say. Uh, I, I have to say, you know, that 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 particular meter, it's a, it's a great meter for what it's for, but for uh, for the actual, uh, I use a, a what was a Andrew, it's called an An Andrew Nino, and and what it that is is just a it's a spectrum meter, so it starts going through frequency ranges and it starts stopping when it hits certain frequencies that it picks up. So I, I used about four or five different types of meters, but each one being being a bit more uh, sensitive than the the previous. But the two the two that were the most effective was the Aura Spectrum Analyzer and the the Gulip uh, meter. Uh, those two were the the ones that uh, really got the the signals and also showed the the square waves as well. All right. I I, I have an RF Spectrum Analyzer, and I I just was wondering how you were. Um, seeing the square waves in the sawtooth is it is it a de, do you demodulate it or how uh, can you just tell by the you, signal you, spike or but you, yeah you you could see it in the in the signal spikes uh, when you when you get the signal spikes uh, yeah it, I mean it comes out as perfectly square signal spike you know that it not just okay. back down or up or anything. Uh, but when it when it comes in as a radio frequency, it looks like a, ra a regular wave, a sine wave. But when they were coming in as as uh, as, uh, as a microwave, they were coming in and looking exactly like square waves. And then when they were coming in as sawtooth, they would look at, they would come in with a a flat front, and then they would you know gradually taper off at the back end, and that's a that's a telltale sign of a sawtooth wave. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Jeremy. Uh, free, a free program that everybody can download. It's called a, a, tone, a tone Generator Analyzer. You can get it from CNET.com for free. And you can download it, and you can actually look, and you can change from a sine wave to a square wave to a sawtooth wave to see what all of them look like. And you can change the frequencies, too, so you can see what the different frequencies sound like as well. Could you that, please? Oh, it's, it's called a it's called a tone generator analyzer. Download from uh, cnet.com. Okay, uh, Karen, next caller, please. More info. Okay. So, with these meters you're talking about. Um, can you run? Can you set them up to run and maybe videotape them while you're sleeping so you can? Absolutely, run them all night if you want. The 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 biggest factor you have on them is is they run off batteries. So if you don't mind buying nine volt batteries, or you can even buy rechargeable nine volt batteries. You could run them all night and videotape them all night and see what goes on. The thing is with the spectrum analyzer, you could run it all night, and not even videotape it, just download. Off your uh, uh, from the uh, one side, you can plug in a USB port and then plug in your computer. It comes with a uh, software, and you can just look at it through that, and you can look through that the whole entire night within the matter of a couple minutes. So. Oh, and that would kind of give me an idea where my hits are coming from, or what type of technology. Well, I'm sorry, Levi. That would give me an idea of what type of technology is being used against me. Yeah, if, if you pick up the telltale signs of a square wave, because it'll look like a square, then you know that's a microwave. And then if you take, pick up with a wave that has a front that's perfectly flat, but the back end goes down like an angle, that's a sawtooth wave that's also a microwave. But if you pick up waves that go up and down like a regular wave should, then, then those are radio waves, and I wouldn't worry about it. You can also pick up... Signal. Those things are so sensitive. You can pick up cars driving down the road because 
uh, the spark plugs in a car actually generate an uh, EMF signal. You can pick up the EMF signal from cars. It's funny. Contact. Let me put our yeah. email address out there for everyone. So if they want to contact us via email, they can uh, They can go to the website and contact us through that. But it's uh, support at C as in Charlie, F as in Frank, I as in Indigo, Enterprises, all one word, dot com. So it's support at CFIEnterprises.com. You can contact uh, both Kathleen and I at that, uh, at that email address. Video made by Gangstalking Attention Awareness. Like, share, and subscribe to keep in touch.